Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. But I garnered. Maybe gar- onto something. No, I garnered that from my OL chat room. <laughs> Seven visitors in the last fifteen years. Six of them were me. I'm going to respectfully disagree. It's <laughs> a lot of coast to coast listening. <laughs> hey, I don't want those people after me. That's Have a, you seen what they that's can do? That's a little obtuse. If, if you, you me. mention the coast to coast people and they get mad at us. You don't know the. That's okay. We'll edit that part out. That's fine. <laughs> they probably have a listening device in here, given what they've done. So. We're going to, your next project, because you've got plenty of room on your calendar, is to draft a proposed basic finance class for deputies, officers, troopers. So do you need a whole day or a half day to teach that class? need about four hours. Outstanding. Actually, one of the chiefs from the sheriff's office, actually all of the chiefs from the sheriff's office, it seems like lately, have gone back to AZ Post, one of which I'm a good friend with. She knows that I, I still maintain my... Uh, certification as a certified financial planner. Uh, I have been actually, it's been on my plate to send her an email with a proposal for this class on personal responsibility for for officers and deputies. Outstanding. I'd love to see that. I would too. I think we could make some good change. And And maybe serve some food with it or snacks. I'd come to that if you had some snacks. Well, (laughs) and it, you know, I call it the GoFundMe revolution. You know, everybody, everybody today seems to finance the uh, oh crap moments with GoFundMe, and that's and, and on one level I get it, but on another level it's it's basically said to an entire generation you don't have to have personal responsibility because if anything bad happens to you there's always GoFundMe. And, and we're cycling back around towards that because I was amazed to see on Instagram that uh, no income verification mortgages are back, and they're being pushed. Mm, here in the boy. valley, and we, and you and I both know deputies who, and, and, and police officers, and troopers who in 2008 went through what many of us did. They realized what an adjustable rate mortgage meant, and what losing a house and going to a smaller house meant, and what that meant to folks, and, and I don't want to see that again. Uh, but when I saw that ad, and, it, and I see it every day now, no income, qual- best way for independent small businessmen to make it so we're, we're heading back that way so i think that class would be invaluable that just scares me now as a survivor of a shooting what didn't you hear i'm look i'm everywhere because i've got some caffeine in me i probably listened to the but yeah, what right, what didn't you learn in the academy beforehand you know um I, one of the things that was really baffling to me was the number of people who told me from up high who told me conflicting things and wanted me to sign conflicting documents. Uh, I ultimately reached out to another agency's uh, division that has kind of this unit that just helps their officers in the event of bad things happen to them. And I, I said, hey, what should I do here and what shouldn't I do here? And, and they and an attorney that I uh, went out and contacted told me what I should and shouldn't do. And I. I had to be very forthcoming about, no, I'm not signing that. Yes, I'll sign that one. Because otherwise, uh, I would have signed away a lot of rights that I had unknowingly. And, and I, I hate to think about, well, what if I was unconscious or in a coma? What would be pushed upon my wife, who has no idea what she should or shouldn't sign? And part of that process, you may mm-hmm. not even know this, I got in a lot of trouble when you finally got up to the floor mm-hmm. because this guy... We volunteers uh, provided the security mm-hmm. for the room uh, because at that point, the person who shot you was still outstanding. He was. Uh, so that was a concern. And, and just keeping media and those folks away. This gentleman came up, and he was there to interview you from OSHA. Not a mm. big fan of government agencies and those questions. So I literally, you know, you can't fire me. I'm an uncon- uncompensated employee, So I and I'm very protective of my friends. I grilled this guy. How many questions are mandatory? <laughs> <laughs> uh, where does it say that that's mandatory? Yes, uh, I know I you. I love you, buddy. I know you come to all, he, the guys. You know that's one of the advantages of being six three, three hundred pounds. People don't really ask you who you are, right? Because uh, that's the hallway was small. You were back in that corner room, and I had him right there in the corner, and I got uniform guy standing there, and he was in and out pretty quick, wasn't he? I 
I, if I know I, you don't I think remember. After he got through you, my dad was in the room, and my dad just oh, no. shut him down so fast it wasn't even. Funny. Yeah, it, it was because he did leave, and and that was not something else. You used a tourniquet on yourself. I did. Where did you get that training? At the time, myself. Uh, and this is this is probably one of the the coolest things that I think came outside of the album. One of the coolest things that I think came from my shooting is I, I think I was probably the first law enforcement officer in Arizona, if not the country, to self-apply a tourniquet. And shortly thereafter, uh, the sheriff's office issued tourniquets out to every deputy and every detention officer. Uh, Scottsdale PD bought tourniquets for every officer. DPS bought tourniquets for every officer. And you can see that little pack hanging Yeah, I think Phoenix even. I mean, so... Whoever owned the tourniquet company made a ton of money off me, which is fine. But more importantly, what as a result, too, they've started to teach is they're teaching uh, combat ca casualty care to officers and deputies as part of their ongoing oh, training. And so I think twice since my shooting, I've been through an hour-long class on how to apply a tourniquet, which is – and this is good stuff. And the, the problem with getting shot is you don't have a clue how bad you're hurt. And you have to make a decision. Do I apply a tourniquet? Do I take, do I apply a tourniquet or don't I? And my mind said, I don't know how bad this is. Let's just put it on. You know, a lot of good, I think ultimately one day that will save somebody's life. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that while that may not have saved another officer or deputy's life at this point, I know firsthand from experiences within the sheriff's office of the tourniquet that these officers and deputies are carrying, applying this to civilians who are getting hurt in ATV accidents. Yes. We, there was a, a case of this, uh, was it last winter, where there was an ATV accident out uh, by the river, and this guy had severed his artery, and a deputy that I work with... Uh, who's also paramedic, applied the tourniquet that was on his own belt for himself to this guy and ended up saving his life, got a life-saving award. I mean, so there are, you know, for every step we take back, we take backwards in society. I, I think we ultimately find a way to take a step forward somehow. So are you speaking to Aton? Have you spoken to him? Uh, I, I speak to Aton. The reason I mentioned Aton is a dear friend of mine and yours, I believe, uh, Israeli trained, Israeli veteran, also a volunteer at the sheriff's office who adjusted your tourniquet. Oh, yeah. What oh, he got to you. Yeah. So uh, uh, Aton is, I, I will tell you a very funny story. So Aton gets there, see the tourniquet's applied, takes his pocket knife, sticks it underneath the tourniquet, and starts turning it like a windlass <laughs> and tightening it down. And, you know, the amount of pain that went through me at that point was incredible because I already had this thing on there pretty tight and he just applied it more and, uh, you know, obviously the legs swelling up and all this other stuff. And then, and then Aton and I share a very special connection. Uh, the running joke is that he's the only man that's ever been inside me <laughs> because Aton at that point took his Can finger. Can you say that, Ben? Yeah, well, you just did. I just did. Can you, can you say that nobody's there? <laughs> no, no, no. No, very few, no. <laughs> no I can't. A Aton took his finger and shoved it inside my leg to see how bad that wound was, and and uh, it, it was a special moment, you know. <laughs> wow. Holy cow. Well, we're grateful for Aton. We're grateful for I'm, you. I'm glad he was there. So I'm looking forward to giving this a listen. I'll do anything to help myself. Uh, I'd like to, if it's all right with you, I, I want to buy some of these, and I want to make them available to people who can't afford them. So I want, I want to do that. I, uh, maybe Ali might even goes to tens of dollars to get these in the right hands because uh, ADHD is not. It's prevalent. It's growing. I know so many people, and I meant to start out with this, and I don't know why I didn't. Uh, special children are given to special people, and I truly believe that you and your wife are both that special people who took a horrible situation. Uh, you're an example for all of us. I mean, the, the tourniquet, uh, you're right. There are on every officer I see, most of them are now wearing, mo or have it carrying and, multiple. And three years ago, there weren't. No, there were not. There were not. And, and I'm sorry you had to go through that for us to all learn from that. Uh, 
Any adverse physically effect, physical effects to this day? I don't run as fast as I used to. There are some weird sensations I get. Um, there's there's some shrapnel in there from where the the jacket the jacket thank you uh, shredded off and and so there's little you can feel little bits and pieces in there in, in places. Uh, there's specifically one where I got hit in the rear end that's in there and every time I clinch my butt down for whatever reason I feel this little shard of metal pinch oh. against a muscle. It's like. Mm. Yep. So there's there's little reminders. Take me back to the first traffic stop after you came back to work and the first traffic stop at night after you came back to work. Well, the first traffic stop I, I made after I came back to work was with a, uh, a very dear friend of mine uh, whose first name is Frank. And I was with he him. He is going to love that. Yep. <laughs> He and is good. This just major week. We might as well mention the pew pew goddess while we're at it because she's gonna she has to be mentioned with him. But go ahead. So you so you weren't alone on your first stop. I was not alone on my first stop, and uh, it was at during the day, which was you know interesting, and you know it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And I remember just being more aware of my surroundings. You know, any any time we conduct traffic stops, you make enough of them, you get into a routine, and and that's probably the bad thing to do. But I was very aware of it. You know, making that first traffic stop alone was, you know, I, I just said, look, I mean, this is like falling off a bike. If you don't get back up, you're not going to do it. Right? The guy, the guy that shot me is dead. Right? I realize there's threats out there. I'm in a, I'm in a job that there are threats, and it is what it is. So uh, be, a, be, a better, be a better deputy. Outstanding. Be more aware. Since deputies can't be everywhere, do you have any advice for those of us in the community who are concealed weapon permit holders or people who have family? You know, we're out there, too. What do we need to know? What can we learn from the police as far as being aware of our situation? I know that some people you know, run up to the ATM. They don't look around. They loiter in front of the store mm. with the car door Situational open. Situational awareness. Yes. Tell you. Any secrets, tricks of the trade? You know, what was... in? Because you're packing right now. Wow. You already you've sized us up. You know how wow. big this room is. You know where the uh, nearest exit I've is. I've already figured out how to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to smash my guitar over there. <laughs> now, it's a Fender. I'd be honored to be killed with a Fender. It's a nice guitar. The weirdest thing to me was I never heard the shots fired. And they sounded, they were, even though they were maybe 10 feet away, I didn't, they sounded very distant. Y you have to use all of your senses in perceiving threats. Your eyes, your ears, your nose. Uh, other people around you are a phenomenal indicator of threats. You know, kind of like, I g I'll give you a great, uh, a great example of this because I think it's something we can all relate to, right? If I'm driving down the, the freeway and there's a drunk on the freeway, right? Most other people on the freeway are pretty aware of that guy who is driving all over the road, exactly. and they're backing off, or they're speeding past this guy, whatever they're doing. So it's kind of like picking up cues from other people around you to say, am I in a world of danger, or am I in a world of safety? Mm. And it's really, I don't, situational awareness, whether you're driving a car on the freeway, making sure you're not going to get killed by a drunk driver, isn't any different than being aware of your surroundings in uh, against criminals. Pick up cues from other people. Pick up cues from your surroundings. Pick up just... Open your eyes, look, listen, take your time, and make sure that you're entering a safe environment. Outstanding. Two more questions. Does pepperoni belong on pizza? It does with pineapple. Boy, see, boy that's joy. I, I knew I liked this guy when he walked blood in. Blood sugar chip. That was the question, but you answered it in spite of the fact that I didn't even know, ask the right question. Uh, Samsung or Android? Uh, no, wait, darn it. Well, wow, you're you're flustered. Yeah, well, I think Look I need you. some processed sugar or something. <laughs> uh, iPhone or Android? I have been a Apple user since 2007. So when Apple first kind of reemerged with we're no longer friends, but with <laughs> its its laptop computers, I was an adopter there because I was so sick of. Uh, their competition and and the pain that dealt with that. 
Uh, I was not an early adopter of the iPhone. It took me, I don't think I got an iPhone until iPhone 4. I was pretty late to the game there. Uh, and same with iPads. I was not an early adopter of those things. I, I don't have an Apple Watch. I don't, I'm not a jump in person in technology. What I have found is that from a technology standpoint, the computer, the phone, the iPad, they all work together fairly seamlessly. Um, and there's from a from a business owner's standpoint, somebody who runs a business on a computer, I don't have I don't have the, as strong as security concerns because of the way the Apple software and and hardware is built versus uh, the competition that's very susceptible to viruses and spying and all that other fun stuff. One last law enforcement related question. Officer Fitness, like you said, you come out of the academy, you're in the best shape of your life. I should be wearing a disguise right now because if I say what I'm going to say, I, I, people are going to hunt me down because they go to, we go to pot. If you look at me, I was 100 and... Oh, I'm, I'm no different. You're, you're, you work out. Okay. A little bit. So should that be required? <laughs> we have an agency in the Valley now that's paying you one hour a day. You're allowed to work out. I'm all for it. Okay. So should there be a measure in place for deputies, troopers, peace officers? Should there be a measure in place? Uh, you don't want to get beat up either, do you? <laughs> you know, I, here, here's the thing. Anybody who's in a, whether you're in the military, your law enforcement, your security, uh, your former CIA, such as you were, you know it's true. Don't don't lie. <laughs> you 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 get up in the morning. He said former. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. You get up in the morning and you either lie to yourself that you are capable of doing your job in your present condition, or you're not. I think most of us lie to ourselves. But the military does have testing. Well, the military has testing, but I've seen some fat guys in the military oh, too. Oh yeah. Right. You know, you're maybe not in a combat unit, but you know the question is in your head: Can you answer? Am I am I capable of putting up with and competing with the threat that's out there? And if you can answer that honestly, yes, then I think you've 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 met your your qualification. If you can't honor that, then you need to do more. That's my answer. I, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say that some standardized test is the the end all be all. I you know good that this collectively peace officers around the state of arizona are breathing a sigh of relief that you're not advocating for that well i'm also you know in my 40s and i can't compete with it you know you tell me i got to go run a mile in 10 minutes you know and compete with a 25 year old it's not going to happen but i will i broke a sweat just thinking about the thought of running 10 a mile 10 minutes yeah it doesn't sound fun to me either. no it doesn't sound fun to me either. how do we find adhd lullaby where do we find it? Uh, you can find it on any digital music streaming platform. So Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Pandora, Napster, you name it, it's on there. It's in India, it's in China, it's in Russia, it's in Australia, Canada, Mexico, you name it, it's all over the world on streaming and for digital download. Uh, if you want physical copies of the CD, it's available through Amazon, Walmart, my website, Barnes & Noble, couple other places. Oh, he's so humble about this. It's, it's amazing the success you've had with that. And it's making a difference. And it's probably putting maybe tens of dollars in your pocket. I think that's just outstanding. <laughs> Where can we follow your story? Because you do share a lot in social media. Where would we find you? So I'm on Instagram. Uh, Who are you on Instagram? ADHD Lullaby. All, all of my handles are ADHD Lullaby. So you've got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I'm probably not as active on Twitter. I to this day, I still can't figure out how to use it. No TikTok for you yet? You know, I tried TikTok. I tried TikTok. And I, I tried TikTok because this the, cute, this, the cutest little girl you can imagine, who is this, she's this 18-year-old. She won Miss Teen Ohio, has this massive TikTok following. And her campaign platform when she won this pageant was ADHD. Oh. And so we kind of got hooked up. And she's like, you got to get on TikTok. You got to get on TikTok. And so I tried TikTok, and I couldn't make heads or tails of TikTok. So I'm no longer on TikTok. I'm not on Snapchat. Uh, I stick to the 
Gen X platforms of Insta of Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> well, you you don't know how happy I was that you were willing to come in today and risk your reputation being seen with me and spending time with me, and I do appreciate it. I, I want what's best for you and yours. Uh, wishing you nothing but life's best. Thank you. And uh, give your best to the kids. Thank him for being open about that. When that that interview, that little that little teeny segment he did, it, it was uh, it was he was vulnerable, and he knows it. And I hope he knows. I'm sure you tell him that he's making a difference through the process with you. I think he does. Yes. Um, and I think. I think as he's getting old, he's a, he's about a year older now from when I started this, and he's seen the media that's coming through. He's seen and hearing some of this stuff, and I, I think he realizes that uh, this is a catalyst that is really changing a lot of lives. And regardless of that situation, it's made a marked improvement in his behavior. It's made a marked improvement on him getting sleep, and it's made a marked improvement on the frustration that we as parents project on him for not sleeping. So regardless of what happens in the rest of the world or whether it's selling in Australia or Canada or Mexico or wherever, uh, the purpose of this album was, was really um, selfish in that we as a family had to find a solution for us. And... We just decided to share it with the world. Outstanding. And for our detractors, I just want to let you know that it is possible, and we've just proved that we can do an entire podcast without wearing pants and not have it affect the quality of the outcome. You don't, you don't have pants on? Uh, no. Oh, I do. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> and as we come up to the back of that plat uh, flare pattern, we see Trooper Anderson, he had already been, at this point we didn't realize he had been shot, but he had already been shot by the suspect. He's on his back and the suspect is, is bludgeoning him. 